And the other Muslim rulers said to Salahuddin, they said, oh Salahuddin, we will give you money, go back. And Salahuddin said, how can I unite with you people? How can I negotiate with you people when you are in one valley and I am in another valley? The valley that he attributed to them was the value of this dunya, the value of preserving their kingdom. While the value that he attributed to himself was the value which led to the akhirah, the value of preserving this ummah. And this is why Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, he said he defined one defining Salahuddin. He says, Kana mu'minan musliman muhammadiyan la ya'rifu ghayra lughatil Qur'an. He said, Salahuddin was a Muslim. He was a Muhammadi. He was a mu'min. The only language that he understood was the language of the Qur'an. The only language that he understood was the language of Islam and Iman. And today you have many Kurds who dislike Salahuddin. They dislike Salahuddin because they believe that he did nothing for their nation. But by Allah, if Salahuddin was here today, he couldn't understand their language because he didn't understand the language of nationalism. He didn't understand the language of Qawmiya. And this is my tribe and this is my country. He understood one language and that was the language of Iman and Islam. And the amazing thing was that the Muslim leaders united with the Crusaders to fight Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi. Many of them sided with the Crusaders and they released a man who was the greatest arch enemy of Islam, a man called Reginald de Chatillon. For 15 years, this man had been in prison. Nuruddin had left him in the dungeons of Halab. They released him so he would be a thorn in the side of Salahuddin. And what did this man do? Soon as he mustered up an army, he marched on Makkah. And na'udhu billah, he was saying, when I reach Makkah, I will bring the Kaaba to the ground. And then na'udhu billah, he said, I will go to Medina. And na'udhu billah, I will take the camel herder from his grave, speaking about the Prophet sallallahu And I will bring him back to my palace in Kerok. And I will charge the Muslims to view his body. And the narrations mention when Salahuddin heard this, he took out his sword, he lifted it to the skies. And he said, by Allah, I will kill Reginald with my own hands. Because he had a deep love for the Prophet Sallallahu The historians mention that Salahuddin never listened to a hadith standing up. When the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu would be recited, he would sit down and he would make everybody else sit down. This is the love that he had for the Prophet Sallallahu And he dispatched an army under Husamuddin Lutlu. And Husamuddin took a navy, he annihilated the army of Reginald. And then he captured his men, he took them to Medina and he executed them in Medina. And four years after this, again, when the Muslims and the Christians had a truce, Reginald attacked a Muslim caravan traveling from Egypt to Syria. And what he would do every time he would put a Muslim to the sword, he would say, you believe in Muhammad Now ask him to help you. And then he would strike his neck. And when Salahuddin heard this, he again took an oath that he would kill this man with his own hands. And it was upon this occasion that Salahuddin brought forth an army. And this is the famous battle, the battle of Hiddi. And the crusaders brought forth an army. And when Salahuddin consulted his men, he said, what shall we do? Shall we carry on attacking their forts and their castles? Or shall we have a head on confrontation? And they said, carry on attacking their forts. And Salahuddin said, no. He said, we will take him head on. Because none of us knows how long he's going to live. And matters run by what Allah decrees, not what we desire. And each one of us should expend himself. And then he said, Oh my men, fight to please your Lord. Do not fight to please me. The Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi didn't rush. He showed what a military genius he was. What he did, he went to a nearby fort. And, he, and this fort had the women and the children of the soldiers there. And he lay siege to it. And then he put his back against the sea. Now, the Christian charges were very strong. The Muslims had problems dealing with Christian charges. But tactically, the Muslims were far superior. So what the Christians thought was one charge at Salahuddin would end up in the sea. 
And this is exactly what Salahuddin wanted them to think. So the next morning, they marched. Midsummer, it was midsummer. With them, they had the true cross. The true cross was the most sacred relic in Christendom. And they believed that as long as they have this, they could never lose a battle. They had actually believed that they had won the previous 20 battles because of the barakah of this cross. So they marched, it was midsummer. And what Salahuddin Rahmatullah then, he had put strategically, he had put arches on the way. Midsummer, and what he did, he poisoned all the wells. So when they began to march, these arches began to shower arrows. So many arrows, so many arrows, that their movements became snail pace. The march should have taken them eight hours. But by sunset, they were miles away from their destination and thousands of them had perished. And they thought night would bring them relief. But the historians mention that Salahuddin Rahmatullah's men had encircled them in a manner that not even an ant could go through. And they mentioned that there were two different cries from two different camps. Because all night the arrows carried on coming. So from the Muslim camp, there were the cries of Takbir Allah Akbar. And from the Christian camp, there were the cries of the dying and the wounded. And overnight, Salahuddin Rahmatullah they bought 400 camels laden with arrows, another 70 waiting. Water was plentiful. The Christians had no water. And next morning, Salahuddin Rahmatullah they noticed that the brushwood was dry and the wind was blowing in the direction of the crusaders so it's midsummer no water and they lit the brush and then now they began to choke on the smoke as well and it was here that the muslims attacked and they were reciting the verse and indeed it is a right upon us that we assist the believers they were reciting these verses and then Salahuddin wanted to afflict the final psychological blow and that was to capture the true cross and Salahuddin Rahmatullah sent the entire regiment to capture it and when the regiment captured it this totally demoralized the Christian and they fell by the wayside and only 150 of them remained standing around the king 150 knights and the Muslims attacked and Salahuddin Rahmatullah was watching this and his brother was standing next to him and he said Alhamdulillah we have defeated them and Salahuddin said not yet and then he attacked again and the Christians went back and the brother said not he said Alhamdulillah we have defeated them and Salahuddin said wait not yet when that tent falls the tent of the king then we have defeated them and when Salahuddin Rahmatullah was saying this the tent fell and what did Salahuddin do what did he do did he jump up and down he descended from his mount and he went into sajda I am not those men I am Salahuddin Salah.